Today I'm joined by Merle van Bente. Merle is BMX Supercross rider, nominated by the person with the most difficult surname, Shannon Brasenix, <laughs> who has been interviewed before. Merle is, as I said, BMX Supercross rider, junior world champion 2010 yep. and Olympian 2016. Welcome, Merle. Nice for having me. Merle, what was your darkest moment? Um, my darkest moment was last year in 2017. I crashed during the first race of the season. Mm -hmm. um, like, I almost destroyed my whole knee and I knew the whole season was over. Um, I knew it was going to be a long road physically, but the hardest part was like the mental aspect because racing has been my whole life for the last few years and in one snap I just didn't have that anymore and um, yeah for me at that time it felt like my whole life fell apart because I've been living in that BMX bubble for so long and I didn't know anything else besides BMX if I my friends were BMXers and everything what I did was involved with BMX and I didn't have that anymore yeah. and I learned that there is so much more than just BMX racing and um, yeah I also learned a lot about myself and life in general so I think um, even though it was like one of my darkest moments it really helped me grow as a person in life and then what did you what did you learn? You said you learned about life and priorities. What specifically did you learn? Um, yeah, the, there is so much more besides the BMX, and like I only focus on BMXing, and I forgot basically about anything else, and I I was so much away from my family, and I realized I really missed them. I didn't realize at the time but like when BMX was gone like I realized started to miss them and like started spending more time with them and like my normal friends and just everything really. There's another dark moment I want to touch on. Okay. I remember that. Um, I think the Papendal World Cup 2012 right? You went out in the quarters and that meant you didn't qualify for yeah. the Olympics and yeah. it was a dark moment for me as a coach as well because you went out and Evo went out yeah. on one day and I still remember I really have it still in front of my eye you hanging over your steering wheel mm -hmm. what went through your head and how did you recover from that because I mean you know you worked for it for four years yeah and then it didn't come together and yeah um, just a lot of disappointment. I knew I did everything I could to make it, like to qualify for the Olympics, but I've had like a few injuries. Um, yeah, what made me not make the Olympics and um, yeah, it was just a lot of disappointments. Like, like you said, you, you've been working for four years for that, that moment and when you didn't make that goal, it's just really, really disappointing. Yeah. And how did you recover from that moment? Because I mean, I worked with you for eight years now and yeah. I mean, one thing I've seen, you always come back and you're always dedicated in training. So, yeah. Yeah, how I, do you stay on track? Like, if I want something bad enough, I just work really hard and even how hard it gets, like, I find the motivation in, inside of me to reach that goal and um, after when I didn't qualify I went through a very low point in my life and um, uh, I just I just like reset myself I went on vacation reset myself and I was determined to make the Rio Olympics and which you did. yeah which I did and that was just an amazing feeling so what was your best moment? Uh, my best moment, well, I've been to the Olympics, so that should be my best moment. But actually my best moment was here at the World Cup in Papendal this year, where I made my comeback yeah. after 40 months of rehab. And 
Like when I crossed the finish line in my semi-final and realized I made the World Cup main, uh, my first race back, like I just <laughs> got really emotional and just all the bad things yeah. came up that I survived that and that I, I made it and it was especially special for me because all my friends were there and my family, yeah. my therapist, my coach and um, yeah, even the surgeon was there. So it was very special to make my my comeback, uh, like making the World Cup main. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did you learn from that moment? That um, like if you want something bad enough and you work hard enough that you can reach your goal mm -hmm. and even how dark you like how dark the point gets um, you got to stay positive and keep working towards your goal and it can happen if you want it bad enough if you go back in time if you could go back in time <laughs> 10 or 15 years yeah. what advice would you give your younger you uh, the advice I would give the younger me is listen to your body better um, I've been through some injuries that I kind of denied because I just wanted to race and I could make it to the race but of course I wasn't healthy enough and um, I crashed again because I wasn't fit so I would yeah that's the advice I would give just to listen to your body more and don't rush into racing so earlier you said it was difficult for you to listen to your body and you were rushing towards competition so if you're now in the same situation you have a race coming up yeah but you feel you're not 100 yeah. percent how would you go make the decision i go or i don't go because it's a balancing act right yeah, yeah of course you really want to race and um like because i've learned from the past that if you're not healthy enough um then it's not smart to race and right now uh, I waited very long for my comeback to um, start racing again because I could ride fine but I wasn't mentally race ready yet so I waited um, waited till, till I felt ready and when I was like physically like almost 100% so yeah just just being smarter and drawing on the experiences you yeah. had from the past. Yeah, yeah. because okay. as an athlete you know when you're ready or not. Yeah. And like in the past I, I kind of knew in my head I wasn't ready but I really wanted to race. Yeah. So, But now I just make sure I'm mentally ready to race and then I'll go out racing and give my 100%. What are the habits that make you a successful athlete in person? Um, I think what made, makes me a successful athlete or person is that I just don't give up if something bad happens to me and and that I'm, uh, I just work really hard towards my goals. Yeah, as I said before, I mean I'm working with you for eight years now and I've seen you having injuries, quite a few, <laughs> severe injuries also, <laughs> yeah. and you always bounce back, always came back motivated, mm -hmm. always worked your way back. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? You said motivation is one thing, but yeah. I guess at some point, as you said, that injury that happened in Arizona, you are at a point where you think like, is it still worth it? Yeah. How do you say it's still worth it and I go for it? Uh, it's hard to say because it's just like what you feel inside. It's just my passion for the sport and mm -hmm. I feel like I haven't reached my full potential yet. So I really want to reach that full potential and I feel like there's so much more in me than what I've shown already mm. so I really want to prove that. Do you have a morning routine? How do you get ready for the day? <laughs> well I wake up, <laughs> have breakfast and um, go on my phone, ch check the social media like almost everyone in the world I guess. Before breakfast or after breakfast? Uh, kind of during, <laughs> okay. just doing both at the same time and then because I've been injured a lot my body's pretty stiff in the morning so I make sure I stretch a bit and get loosen up a bit for training 
So, yeah. And then drive to Papendal and just do my thing. Okay. How do you prepare yourself for important moments? Um, at race days. For example? Um, at race days, I just make sure my body is ready to race. I do a proper warm up, uh, activate my legs, and then I'll put my gear on. Well, not my gear on yet, but I'll get my stuff, get ready for staging. And normally, Bass is there and we talk about the race, but not, not too long because, like, I am not the person who has to focus the whole day on, on the racing because that will make me crazy. Mm -hmm. So we start talking about just some random things. But as soon as I go up the hill, I get into that race mode and focus on what I got to do. And then I just... Hmm. So from a, from a order perspective, you get physically ready first and that helps you mentally? Yeah. Is that what I understand? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. If I feel physically ready, then I'm mentally ready as well. Hmm. Of course, it starts with being ready to race, but then you prepare yourself physically so you can you have done everything you could to be ready mentally, mm -hmm. and then you start going through the race and then focus on what you have to do. Okay. Big one. How do you overcome setbacks? <laughs> when things don't go your way. Um, and I've specifically written down here, I've touched on that before, you had so many setbacks now, yeah. injuries, Yeah, yeah. Like you always bounce back. Yeah. So. Like I said before, it's just the uh, determination in me and um, the passion of anything in life, really. If I, if I really love doing something, um, I won't give up, I just keep going till I reach that goal and yeah. Even if you got a setback, it's not forever, you know? Like like that knee injury, it took me 14 months, but what is 14 months on a whole life? Like bad times won't last forever. Hmm. So I just, yeah. That is true. However, having been alongside you in this 14 months, it was a slow process at times, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I still remember you worked <laughs> so hard and the process was yeah. very, uh, the progress was very little <laughs> yeah. at, at times. Yeah. So how did you maintain faith that bad times yeah. were? Well, in the beginning of, of my injury, I kept focusing on the end goal, which was like riding again. But I experienced that wasn't really the way to go. I needed to focus on one small step at a time to reach that end goal. Because mm. I was focusing on, oh, I want to race and just just keep thinking about racing. But I forgot um, that I still needed to walk first or do a body weight squat or ride my road bike I forgot mm. I forgot the, the the small steps to make it to that end goal mm. so that yeah I think the most important things thing is to focus on the small steps to reach your end goal and when you focus on these steps or you have these mini goals whatever do you write them down or you have it in your head no I've got them in my head and um, well, sometimes I've written them down, like in like, let's say in three months, I want to um, be able to ride my road bike or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, some, some things I write down to like keep focus on things, but at the end it's, it, it's just, um, you cannot really, um, rely on what you've written down it's just when you feel ready when you can do things it's who's your role model and why uh, my role model is Lindsay Vaughn the downhill ski skier um, she's had many setbacks as well and she also bounced back every time so yeah that's a big inspiration for me 
What is the best advice you have received and who gave it to you? <laughs> um, actually, my coach gave me the best advice. I remember like my first year junior I was really struggling with racing well having pressure on me for the European champs um, because I was like in the title position but I, I, f I forgot kind of to enjoy the moment so he, he told me one of his stories that uh, when he was a professional downhiller uh, he was in the chairlift and that was a moment for him, like for peace and to realize that um, being able to race your bike for a living, that it's one of the best moments. And um, it helped me to find that enjoyment back into the racing. And so that even still now, he, if I'm if I'm stressing about a race or something, he just like he says, just just chairlift, and then I I know like to start enjoying it a bit more. Hmm. Then, how does a typical training day look like? Um, kind of depends on in what part we are in the season. In in the off season, we mostly train twice a day, and then I've I have breakfast, uh, stretch, go to Papendal. Uh, do my training, have a recovery shake, um, have lunch, have a nap, and then go back to Papendal, train again, uh, recover, um, rest, have dinner, then chill with some of my friends who also live here. So it's a kind of for some people. Um, they think it's pretty boring, but I really enjoy doing it. Okay, I've done my research. Why do you like the American lifestyle better than the Dutch lifestyle? <laughs> I don't know. It, first thing is just the weather. Well, the weather has been good here uh, the past few weeks, but normally I can it's... I align with that. Huh? <laughs> I can align with that. <laughs> yeah, the weather is normally pretty, pretty bad. Um, and yeah, I just love the California lifestyle it's just what specifically I don't know I think people um, everyone here in Holland is so stressed about everything and in California it seems to be more laid back and just mm. yeah more my kind of style cool mm -hmm. that's cool do you want to nominate someone to be interviewed? Uh, yeah, I would like to re nominate Rob van der Bilderberg. He, um, he used to be a BMX racer, he retired. He went to the 2008 Olympics, um, but is now the talent team coach. So I thought it would be nice to see what he has been okay, cool. learning about life and we get sport. Rob. Yeah. We get Rob onto the camera. Yeah. Cool. Where can people find you? Uh, they can find me on all the social media, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, just my, it's just my name, Merle van Bentham, and just follow me. <laughs> we'll put that up. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Merle. That was yeah. great. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you.